brethren, ye have done it unto me. Wow. What we did to Terry Shivo, we did to God himself. What you've done unto the least of these. You know, we're never going to protect adequately these people if we don't have the heart of God for the least of these. You say, David, who are the least of these? Quick definition, anybody who can't do something back for you. I mean, we're in a win-win, you scratch my back, I'll do for you, you do for me, and that's America. But you know what the least of these is? It's the disabled person, it's the senior citizen, it's the poor family, it's somebody else's kid, it's somebody living in a foreign nation who can't do anything for you. And when you do it for them, God says, you did it unto me. After the Terry Schiavo case, I've begged people nationwide, would you have the heart of God for the least of these? We need to defend life. We need to have the heart of God for the least of these. And lastly, we need to live our life in light of eternity. How many understand Terry Schiavo died in March of 2005? There's nothing we can do to bring her back. And I remember uh, Larry King the night she died. He did a three-hour television special. And he asked me this question. He said, Mr. Gibbs... You fought to keep her alive and she's now dead. What should we think about now? I said, Larry, this whole case dealt with her life, her quality of life. But now that she's dead, I think everybody watching this broadcast ought to ask themselves, are you ready for the day that you will die and step into eternity? And at that moment, he said, that is an amazingly deep and a very profound question. And he said, we're going to get back to that right after commercial. (laughs) And how many understand they never want to get back to it? And you know, that's how a lot of people live their life. They want to live their life like, you know what, it doesn't, at the end, I'll just kind of wait and see. And they just don't ever want to make preparations for eternity. Can I give you some good news, my friend? In the word of God, Jesus Christ has said, you can know that heaven is your home for all eternity. And you say, well, Mr. Gibbs, how much is that going to cost me? Wonderfully, the Bible talks about that. It's a free gift. I mean, like the words free and the word gift. And you know what? It's just simple faith. It's you saying, I can't save myself, but I'll put my confidence in Jesus Christ. This morning, in just a moment, you're going to have an opportunity. If you've never trusted Christ, they're going to have an invitation, a moment where you can respond and make sure that you're ready for the day when you die. But can I give you one final challenge to the Christians that are here? Could I challenge you to make all your decisions in light of eternity? A lot of people after the Terry Schiavo case went out and said, oh, I'll get a living will. You know what a living will is? Don't mix it up with your last will and testament. Living will is a medical document. It's very pro-death. It kind of says, kill me, kill me quickly, and I won't sue. It's written by lawyers and insurance companies. And be careful that you don't start living your life without factoring eternity in view. Pastor's wife came up to me. Her dad was unsaved. He had a living will. He had a do not resuscitate. He got the family together regularly and said, I don't want to live. If I'm ever sick, let me go. But he was lost. She got the call one day, said, your dad's going to the hospital. What do we do? She said, I disobeyed everything my dad told me to do. I said, keep him alive. I'm on my way. And her and her husband went down and tried to witness to him one last time. She said, it was really tough. It was squeezing and hands and blinks and nodding. But she said, we thought maybe he had agreed and trusted Christ, but we couldn't know. A couple weeks later, they came to her and said, ma'am, you need to turn everything off. It's time to let him go. He's not going to live. And so they said a prayer, pulled the plug, waited for him to die. Interestingly, he did not die. Proceeded to live for another two years. That happens sometimes. The body will actually kick. It just, once you pull everything off, it kicks back into gear. 
would go home and live by himself for the last two years of his life. Never miss church every single service the last two years of his life. Read through his Bible three times the last two years of his life. Prayed for his family and his church two hours a day every day. And every time he saw his daughter, said, thank you for disobeying my wishes and making sure I knew Jesus before I die. How many believe we need to make every decision in light of eternity? This morning, the Terry Schiavo case, a sad, heartbreaking moment in American history. And sometimes people get mad. But I give you this final thought of encouragement. Our country at one point had courts that said slavery was okay. Our country at one point had courts that said women could not vote or participate in the government. Our country at one point had courts that said, depending on the color of your skin, your civil rights will be different. And you know what? In all those situations, justice ultimately prevailed. And as you know, slavery after a civil war was abolished in this country. Women are now given an equal opportunity to vote and to participate in our government. And you now know our civil rights don't depend on the color of your skin. Terry Schiavo, her life was taken, I believe, unjustly, and courts allowed it to happen. But how many believe if enough good people step forward and they defend life and they have the heart of God for the least of these and they make the decision to be ready for eternity and to live their life in light of eternity, how many believe ultimately justice could prevail? Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around.